Mao Zedong, Zedong, Mao Zedong, December 26, 1893, September 9, 1976, also known as Chairman Mao, was a Chinese Communist revolutionary who was the founding father of the People's Republic of China, which he ruled as the chairman of the Chinese Communist Party from the establishment of the PRC in 1949 until ideologically a Marxist-Leninist. His theories, military strategies, and political policies are collectively known as Maoism. Mao was the son of a prosperous peasant in Shaoshan, Hunan. He supported Chinese nationalism and had an anti-imperialist outlook early in his life and was particularly influenced by the events of the Xinhai Revolution of 1911 and May Fourth Movement of 1919. He later adopted Marxism-Leninism while working at Peking University as a librarian and became a founding member of the Chinese Communist Party CCP, leading the Autumn Harvest Uprising in 1927. During the Chinese Civil War between the Kuomintang KMT and the CCP, Mao helped to found the Chinese Workers and Peasants Red Army, led the Jiangxi Soviet's radical land policies, and ultimately became head of the CCP during the Long March. Although the CCP temporarily allied with the KMT under the Second United Front during the Second Sino-Japanese War 1937-1945, China's civil war resumed after Japan's surrender, and Mao's forces defeated the nationalist government, which withdrew to Taiwan in 1949. On October 1, 1949, Mao proclaimed the foundation of the PRC, a Marxist-Leninist single-party state controlled by the CCP. In the following years, he solidified his control through the Chinese land reform against landlords, the campaign to suppress counter-revolutionaries, the three anti- and five anti-campaigns, and through a psychological victory in the Korean War, which altogether resulted in the deaths of several million Chinese. From 1953 to 1958, Mao played an important role in enforcing planned economy in China, constructing the first constitution of the PRC, launching the industrialization program, and initiating military projects such as the Two Bombs, One Satellite Project, and Project 523. In 1955, Mao launched the Sufin movement, and in 1957, he launched the anti-rightist campaign, in which at least 550,000 people, mostly intellectuals and dissidents, were persecuted. In 1958, he launched the Great Leap Forward that aimed to rapidly transform China's economy from agrarian to industrial, which led to the deadliest famine in history and the deaths of 1555 million people between 1958 and 1962. In 1963, Mao launched the Socialist Education Movement, and in 1966 he initiated the Cultural Revolution, a program to remove counter-revolutionary elements in Chinese society, which lasted ten years and was marked by violent class struggle, widespread destruction of cultural artifacts, and an unprecedented Tens of millions of people were persecuted during the revolution while the estimated number of deaths ranges from hundreds of thousands to millions. After years of ill health, Mao suffered a series of heart attacks in 1976 and died at the age of 82. During Mao's era, China's population grew from around 550 million to over 900 million while the government did not strictly enforce. A controversial figure, Mao is regarded as one of the most important individuals in the 20th century. He is also known as a political intellect theorist, military strategist, and poet. During Mao's era, China was involved in the Korean War, the Sino-Soviet split, the Vietnam War, and the rise of Khmer Rouge. He ruled China through an autocratic and totalitarian regime responsible for mass repression, as well as destruction of religious and cultural artifacts and sites. The government was responsible for vast numbers of deaths, with estimates ranging from 40 to 80 million victims through starvation, persecution, prison labor, and mass executions. Mao has been praised with transforming China from a semi-colony to a leading world power, with greatly advanced literacy, women's rights, basic health care, 
primary education, and life expectancy. English Romanization of Name During Mao's lifetime, the English language media universally rendered his name as Mao Tse Tung, using the Wade Giles system of transliteration for standard Chinese, though with the circumflex accent in the syllable Tse dropped. Due to its recognizability, the spelling was used widely, even by the foreign ministry of the PRC after Pinyin Hanyu Pinyin became the PRC official romanization system for Mandarin Chinese in 1958. The well-known booklet of Mao's political statements, The Little Red Book, was officially entitled Quotations from Chairman Mao Tse Tung in English Translations. While the Pinyin-derived spelling Mao Zedong is increasingly common, the way Giles derived spelling Mao Tse Tung continues to be used in modern publications to some extent. Early Life Youth and the Xinhai Revolution, 1893, 1911, and 11. Mao was born on December 26, 1893, in Shaoshan village, Hunan. His father, Mao Yichang, was a formerly impoverished peasant who had become one of the wealthiest farmers in Shaoshan. Growing up in rural Hunan, Mao described his father as a stern disciplinarian who would beat him and his three siblings, the boys Zemin and Zetan, as well as an adopted girl, Sejin. Mao's mother, Wen Kai Mai, was a devout Buddhist who tried to temper her husband's strict attitude. Mao, too, became a Buddhist, but abandoned this faith in his mid-teenage years. At age eight, Mao was sent to Shaoshan Primary School. Learning the value systems of Confucianism, he later admitted that he did not enjoy the classical Chinese texts preaching Confucian morals, instead favoring classic novels like Romance of the Three Kingdoms and Water Margin. At age 13, Mao finished primary education, and his father united him in an arranged marriage to the 17-year-old Liu Yixiu, thereby uniting their land-owning families. Mao refused to recognize her as his wife, becoming a fierce critic of arranged marriage and temporarily moving away. Luo was locally disgraced and died in 1910. While working on his father's farm, Mao read voraciously and developed a political consciousness from Zheng Guanying's booklet which lamented the deterioration of Chinese power and argued for the adoption of representative democracy. Interested in history, Mao was inspired by the military prowess and nationalistic fervor of George Washington and Napoleon Bonaparte. His political views were shaped by Jalea Huey-led protests, which erupted following a famine in Changsha, the capital of Hunan. Mao supported the protesters' demands, but the armed forces suppressed the dissenters and executed their leaders. The famine spread to Shaoshan where starving peasants seized his father's grain. He disapproved of their actions as morally wrong, but claimed sympathy for their situation. At age 16, Mao moved to a higher primary school in nearby Dongshan, where he was bullied for his peasant background. In 1911, Mao began middle school in Changsha. Revolutionary sentiment was strong in the city, where there was widespread animosity towards Emperor Pui's absolute monarchy and many were advocating republicanism. The Republicans' figurehead was Sun Yat-sen, an American-educated Christian who led the Tang and Huey Society. In Changsha, Mao was influenced by Sun's newspaper. The People's Independence Minli Bao and called for Sun to become president in a school essay. As a symbol of rebellion against the Manchu monarch, Mao and a friend cut off their cupid tails, a sign of subservience to the emperor. Inspired by Sun's republicanism, the army rose up across southern China, sparking the Xinhai Revolution. Changsha's governor fled, leaving the city in republican control. Supporting the revolution, Mao joined the rebel army as a private soldier, but was not involved in fighting. The northern provinces remained loyal to the emperor, and hoping to avoid a civil war, Sun proclaimed provisional president by his supporters compromised with the monarchist general Yuan Shikai. The monarchy was abolished, creating the Republic of China, but the monarchist Yuan became president. The revolution over, Mao resigned from the army in 1912, after six months as a soldier. Around this time, 
Mao discovered socialism from a newspaper article proceeding to read pamphlets by Jiang Kanghu, the student founder of the Chinese Socialist Party. Mao remained interested yet unconvinced by the idea. Fourth Normal School of Changsha, 1912-1919 Over the next few years, Mao Zedong enrolled and dropped out of a police academy, a soap production school, a law school, an economics school, and the government-run Changsha Middle School. Studying independently, he spent much time in Changsha's library, reading core works of classical liberalism such as Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations and Montesquieu's The Spirit of the Laws, as well as the works of Western scientists and philosophers such as Darwin, Mill, Rousseau, and Spencer. Viewing himself as an intellectual, years later he admitted that at this time he thought himself better than working people. He was inspired by Friedrich Paulson, whose liberal emphasis on individualism led Mao to believe that strong individuals were not bound by moral codes, but should strive for the greater good. His father saw no use in his son's intellectual pursuits, cut off his allowance and forced him to move into a hostel for the destitute. Mao desired to become a teacher and enrolled at the Fourth Normal School of Changsha, which soon merged with the First Normal School of Hunan, widely seen as the best in Hunan. Befriending Mao Professor Yang Changji urged him to read a radical newspaper, New Youth Zinkingian, the creation of his friend Chen Duxiu, a dean at Peking University. Although he was a supporter of Chinese nationalism, Chen argued that China must look to the West to cleanse itself of superstition and autocracy. In his first school year, Mao befriended an older student, Xiao Zisheng. Together they went on a walking tour of Hunan, begging and writing literary couplets to obtain food. A popular student, in 1915 Mao was elected secretary of the Students' Society. He organized the Association for Student Self-Government and led protests against school rules. Mao published his first article in New Youth in April 1917, instructing readers to increase their physical strength to serve the revolution. He joined the Society for the Study of Wang Fuzhou Chuan Shen Sushi, a revolutionary group founded by Changsha literati who wished to emulate the philosopher Wang Fuzhou. In spring 1917, he was elected to command the students' volunteer army, set up to defend the school from marauding soldiers. Increasingly interested in the techniques of war, he took a keen interest in World War I and also began to develop a sense of solidarity with workers. Mao undertook feats of physical endurance with Xiao Zixing and Kai Hessen, and with other young revolutionaries they formed the Renovation of the People Study Society in April 1918 to debate Chen Duxiu's ideas. Desiring personal and societal transformation, the society gained 70-80 members, many of whom would later join the Communist Party. Mao graduated in June 1919, ranked third in the year. Early Revolutionary Activity Beijing Anarchism and Marxism 1917-1919 Mao moved to Beijing, where his mentor Yang Changji had taken a job at Peking University. Yang thought Mao exceptionally intelligent and handsome, securing him a job as assistant to the university librarian Lai Dazhao, who would become an early Chinese communist. Lai authored a series of new youth articles on the October Revolution in Russia, during which the Communist Bolshevik Party, under the leadership of Vladimir Lenin, had seized power. Lenin was an advocate of the socio-political theory of Marxism, first developed by the German sociologists Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, and Lai's articles added Marxism to the doctrines in Chinese revolutionary movement. Becoming more and more radical, Mao was initially influenced by Peter Kropotkin's anarchism, which was the most prominent radical doctrine of the day. Chinese anarchists, such as Kai Yuanpei, chancellor of Peking University, called for complete social revolution in social relations, family structure, and women's equality, rather than the simple change in the form of government called for by earlier revolutionaries. He joined Lai's study group and developed rapidly toward Marxism during the winter of 1919. Paid a low wage, Mao lived in a cramped room with seven other Hunanese students, 
but believed that Beijing's beauty offered vivid and living compensation. At the university, Mao was snubbed by other students due to his rural Hunanese accent and lowly position. He joined the university's philosophy and journalism societies and attended lectures and seminars by the likes of Chen Duxiu, Hu Xi, and Kaiyang Fuentong. Mao's time in Beijing ended in the spring of 1919 when he traveled to Shanghai with friends who were preparing to leave for France. He did not return to Shaoxian, where his mother was terminally ill. She died in October 1919, and her husband died in January 1920. New Culture and Political Protests, 1919-1920 On May 4, 1919, students in Beijing gathered at the Tiananmen to protest the Chinese government's weak resistance to Japanese expansion in China. Patriots were outraged at the influence given to Japan in the 21 demands in 1915, the complicity of Duan Kurui's Beiyang government, and the betrayal of China in the Treaty of Versailles, wherein Japan was allowed to receive territories in Shandong, which had been surrendered by Germany. These demonstrations ignited the nationwide May 4th movement and fueled the new culture movement which blamed China's diplomatic defeats on social and cultural backwardness. In Changsha, Mao had begun teaching history at the Zhu Primary School and organizing protests against the pro duan governor of Hunan province, Zhang Jinyo, popularly known as Zhang the Venomous due to his corrupt and violent rule. In late May, Mao co-founded the Hunanese Student Association with He Xu Heng and Deng Zhangxia, organizing a student strike for June, and in July 1919 began production of a weekly radical magazine using vernacular language that would be understandable to the majority of China's populace. He advocated the need for a great union of the popular masses, strengthen trade unions able to wage non-violent revolution. His ideas were not Marxist, but heavily influenced by Kropotkin's concept of mutual aid. Zhang banned the student association, but Mao continued publishing after assuming editorship of the liberal magazine New Hunans in Hunan and offered articles in popular local newspaper Justice Ta Kung Po. Several of these advocated feminist views, calling for the liberation of women in Chinese society. Mao was influenced by his forced arranged marriage. In December 1919, Mao helped organize a general strike in Hunan, securing some concessions, but Mao and other student leaders felt threatened by Zhang, and Mao returned to Beijing visiting the terminally ill Yang Changji. Mao found that his articles had achieved a level of fame among the revolutionary movement and set about soliciting support in overthrowing Zhang. Coming across newly translated Marxist literature by Thomas Kirkup, Karl Kotsky, and Marx and Engels, notably the Communist Manifesto, he came under their increasing influence, but was still eclectic in his views. Mao visited Tianjin Jinin and Kufu before moving to Shanghai, where he worked as a laundryman and met Chen Duxiu, noting that Chen's adoption of Marxism deeply impressed me at what was probably a critical period in my life. In Shanghai, Mao met an old teacher of his Yi Peiji, a revolutionary and member of the Kuomintang KMT, or Chinese Nationalist Party, which was gaining increasing support and influence. He introduced Mao to General Tan Yankai, a senior KMT member who held the loyalty of troops stationed along the Hunanese border with Guangdong. Tan was plotting to overthrow Zhang, and Mao aided him by organizing the Changsha students. In June 1920, Tan led his troops into Changsha, and Zhang fled. In the subsequent reorganization of the provincial administration, Mao was appointed headmaster of the junior section of the first normal school. Now receiving a large income, he married Yang Kai Hui in the winter of 1920. Founding the Chinese Communist Party, 1921-1922 The Chinese Communist Party was founded by Chen Duxiu and Lai Dazhou in the French concession of Shanghai in 1921 as a study society and informal network. Mao set up a Changsha branch, also establishing a branch of the Socialist Youth Corps and a cultural book society, which opened a bookstore to propagate revolutionary literature throughout Hunan. He was involved in the movement for Hunan autonomy, 
in the hope that a Hunanese constitution would increase civil liberties and make his revolutionary activity easier. When the movement was successful in establishing provincial autonomy under a new warlord, Mao forgot his involvement. By 1921, small Marxist groups existed in Shanghai, Beijing, Changsha, Wuhan, Guangzhou, and Jinan. It was decided to hold a central meeting, which began in Shanghai on July 23, 1921. The first session of the National Congress of the Chinese Communist Party was attended by 13 delegates, Mao included. After the authorities sent a police spy to the Congress, the delegates moved to a boat on South Lake near Jiaxing, in Zhejiang, to escape detection. Although Soviet and Comintern delegates attended, the first Congress ignored Lenin's advice to accept a temporary alliance between the Communists and the bourgeois Democrats who also advocated national revolution. Instead they stuck to the orthodox Marxist belief that only the urban proletariat could lead a socialist revolution. Mao was now party secretary for Hunan stationed in Changsha, and to build the party there he followed a variety of tactics. In August 1921, he founded the Self-Study University, through which readers could gain access to revolutionary literature, housed in the premises of the society, for the study of Wang Fuzhai, a Qing Dynasty Hunanese philosopher who had resisted the Manchus. He joined the Inca mass education movement to fight illiteracy, though he edited the textbooks to include radical sentiments. He continued organizing workers to strike against the administration of Hunan governor, Xiao Hengti. Yet labor issues remained central. The successful and famous Enyu in coal mines strikes contrary to later party historians depended on both proletarian and bourgeois strategies. Liu Shiaki and Lai Lisson and Mao not only mobilized the miners, but formed schools and cooperatives and engaged local intellectuals, gentry, military officers, merchants, red gang dragon heads, and even church clergy. Mao claimed that he missed the July 1922 Second Congress of the Communist Party in Shanghai because he lost the address. Adopting Lenin's advice, the delegates agreed to an alliance with the bourgeois Democrats of the KMT for the good of the National Revolution. Communist Party members joined the KMT, hoping to push its politics leftward. Mao enthusiastically agreed with this decision, arguing for an alliance across China's socio-economic classes. Mao was a vocal anti-imperialist, and in his writings he lambasted the governments of Japan, the UK and US, describing the latter as the most murderous of hangmen. Collaboration with the Kuomintang, 1922-1927 At the Third Congress of the Communist Party in Shanghai in June 1923, the delegates reaffirmed their commitment to working with the KMT. Supporting this position, Mao was elected to the party committee. At the first KMT Congress, held in Guangzhou in early 1924, Mao was elected an alternate member of the KMT Central Executive Committee and put forward four resolutions to decentralize power to urban and rural bureaus. His enthusiastic support for the KMT earned him the suspicion of Lai Lai San, his Hunan comrade. In late 1924, Mao returned to Shaoshan, perhaps to recuperate from an illness. He found that the peasantry were increasingly restless and some had seized land from wealthy landowners to found communes. This convinced him of the revolutionary potential of the peasantry, an idea advocated by the KMT leftists but not the communists. He returned to Guangzhou to run the sixth term of the KMT Peasant Movement Training Institute from May to September 1926. The Peasant Movement Training Institute under Mao trained Cotter and prepared them for militant activity, taking them through military training exercises and getting them to study basic left-wing texts. In the winter of 1925, Mao fled to Guangzhou after his revolutionary activities attracted the attention of Zhao's regional authorities. When party leader Sun Yat-sen died in May 1925, he was succeeded by Chiang Kai-shek, who moved to marginalize the left KMT and the communists. Mao nevertheless supported Qing's National Revolutionary Army, who embarked on the Northern Expedition attack in 1926 on warlords. In the wake of this expedition, 
peasants rose up, appropriating the land of the wealthy landowners, who were in many cases killed. Such uprisings angered senior KMT figures, who were themselves landowners, emphasizing the growing class and ideological divide within the revolutionary movement. In March 1927, Mao appeared at the third plenum of the KMT Central Executive Committee in Wuhan, which sought to strip General Qing of his power by appointing Wang Jingwei leader. There, Mao played an active role in the discussions regarding the peasant issue, defending a set of regulations for the repression of local bullies and bad gentry, which advocated the death penalty or life imprisonment for anyone found guilty of counter-revolutionary activity, arguing that in a revolutionary situation, peaceful methods cannot suffice. In April 1927, Mao was appointed to the KMT five-member Central Land Committee, urging peasants to refuse to pay rent. Mao led another group to put together a draft resolution on the land question, which called for the confiscation of land belonging to local bullies and bad gentry, corrupt officials, militarists, and all counter-revolutionary elements in the villages. Proceeding to carry out a land survey, he stated that anyone owning over 30 mu four and a half acres, constituting 13% of the population, were uniformly counter-revolutionary. He accepted that there was great variation in revolutionary enthusiasm across the country, and that a flexible policy of land redistribution was necessary. Presenting his conclusions at the enlarged land committee meeting, many expressed reservations, some believing that it went too far, and others not far enough. Ultimately, his suggestions were only partially implemented. Civil War Nanchang and Autumn Harvest Uprisings, 1927 Fresh from the success of the northern expedition against the warlords, Chiang turned on the communists, who by now numbered in the tens of thousands across China. Chiang ignored the orders of the Wuhan-based left KMT government and marched on Shanghai, a city controlled by communist militias. As the communists awaited Chiang's arrival, he loosed the white terror, massacring 5,000 with the aid of the Green Gang. In Beijing, 19 leading communists were killed by Zhang Zuolin. That May, tens of thousands of communists and those suspected of being communists were killed, and the CCP lost approximately 15,000 of its 25,000 members. The CCP continued supporting the Wuhan KMT government, a position Mao initially supported, but by the time of the CCP Fifth Congress he had changed his mind, deciding to stake all hope on the peasant militia. The question was rendered moot when the Wuhan government expelled all communists from the KMT on July 15. The CCP founded the Workers' and Peasants' Red Army of China, better known as the Red Army, to battle Chiang. A battalion led by General Zhu Du was ordered to take the city of Nanchang on August 1, 1927, in what became known as the Nanchang Uprising. They were initially successful, but were forced into retreat after five days marching south to Shantou, and from there they were driven into the wilderness of Fujian. Mao was appointed commander-in-chief of the Red Army and led four regiments against Changsha in the Autumn Harvest Uprising, in the hope of sparking peasant uprisings across Hanan. On the eve of the attack, Mao composed a poem the earliest of his to survive titled Changsha. His plan was to attack the KMT-held city from three directions on September 9, but the 4th Regiment deserted to the KMT cause, attacking the 3rd Regiment. Mao's army made it to Changsha, but could not take it by September 15. He accepted defeat and with 1,000 survivors marched east to the Jingang Mountains of Jiangxi. Zheng Chang and John Halliday claimed that the uprising was in fact sabotaged by Mao to allow him to prevent a group of KMT soldiers from defecting to any other CCP leader. Chang and Halliday also claim that Mao talked to the other leaders, including Russian diplomats at the Soviet consulate in Changsha, who Chang and Halliday claim had been controlling much of the CCP activity into striking only at Changsha, then abandoning it. Chang and Halliday report a view sent to Moscow by the secretary of the Soviet consulate in Changsha, that the retreat was the most despicable treachery and cowardice. Base in Jingyangshan, 1927-1928
the CCP Central Committee, heading in Shanghai, expelled Mao from their ranks and from the Hunan Provincial Committee as punishment for his military opportunism, for his focus on rural activity, and for being too lenient with bad gentry. They nevertheless adopted three policies. He had long championed the immediate formation of workers' councils, the confiscation of all land without exemption, and the rejection of the KNT. Mao's response was to ignore them. He established a base in Jingyangshan City, an area of the Jingyang Mountains, where he united five villages as a self-governing state and supported the confiscation of land from rich landlords, who were re-educated and sometimes executed. He ensured that no massacres took place in the region and pursued a more lenient approach than that advocated by the Central Committee. He proclaimed that even the lame, the deaf and the blind could all come in useful for the revolutionary struggle. He boosted the army's numbers, incorporating two groups of bandits into his army, building a force of around 1,800 troops. He laid down rules for his soldiers, prompt obedience to orders, all confiscations were to be turned over to the government, and nothing was to be confiscated from poorer peasants. In doing so, he molded his men into a disciplined, efficient fighting force. In spring 1928, the Central Committee ordered Mao's troops to southern Hunan, hoping to spark peasant uprisings. Mao was skeptical, but complied. They reached Hunan, where they were attacked by the KMT and fled after heavy losses. Meanwhile, KMT troops had invaded Jingangshan, leaving them without a base. Wandering the countryside, Mao's forces came across a CCP regiment led by General Zhu Di and Lin Baio. They united and attempted to retake Jingangshan. They were initially successful, but the KMT counter-attacked and pushed the CCP back. Over the next few weeks, they fought an entrenched guerrilla war in the mountains. The Central Committee again ordered Mao to march to South Hunan, but he refused and remained at his base. Contrastingly, Zhu complied and led his armies away. Mao's troops fended the KMT off for 25 days while he left the camp at night to find reinforcements. He reunited with the decimated Zhu's army, and together they returned to Jingangshan and retook the base. There, they were joined by a defecting KMT regiment and Peng Dehuai's 5th Red Army. In the mountainous area, they were unable to grow enough crops to feed everyone, leading to food shortages throughout the winter. In 1928, Mao met and married He Zizhen, an 18-year-old revolutionary who would bear him six children. Jiangxi Soviet Republic of China, 1929-1934 In January 1929, Mao and Zhu evacuated the base with 2,000 men and a further 800 provided by Peng and took their army south to the area around Tanggu and Xinfeng in Jiangxi. The evacuation led to a drop in morale, and many troops became disobedient and began thieving. This worried Lai Lisson and the Central Committee, who saw Mao's army as lumpen proletariat that were unable to share in proletariat class consciousness. In keeping with orthodox Marxist thought, Lai believed that only the urban proletariat could lead a successful revolution and saw little need for Mao's peasant guerrillas, he ordered Mao to disband his army into units to be sent out to spread the revolutionary message. Mao replied that while he concurred with Lai's theoretical position, he would not disband his army nor abandon his base. Both Lai and Mao saw the Chinese revolution as the key to world revolution, believing that a CCP victory would spark the overthrow of global imperialism and capitalism. In this, they disagreed with the official line of the Soviet government and commenter. Officials in Moscow desired greater control over the CCP and removed Lai from power by calling him to Russia for an inquest into his errors. They replaced him with Soviet-educated Chinese communists, known as the 28 Bolsheviks, two of whom, Bo Gu and Zhang Wenshin, took control of the Central Committee. Mao disagreed with the new leadership, believing they grasped little of the Chinese situation, and he soon emerged as their key rival. In February 1930, Mao created the Southwest Jiangxi Provincial Soviet government in the region under his control. 
In November, he suffered emotional trauma after his second wife, Yang Kai Hui, and sister were captured and beheaded by KMT General He Jian. Facing internal problems, members of the Jiangxi Soviet accused him of being too moderate and hence anti revolutionary. In December, they tried to overthrow Mao, resulting in the Fushan Incident, during which Mao's loyalists tortured many and executed between 2,000 and 3,000 dissenters. The CCP Central Committee moved to Jiangxi, which it saw as a secure area. In November, it proclaimed Jiangxi to be the Soviet Republic of China, an independent communist governed state. Although he was proclaimed chairman of the Council of People's Commissars, Mao's power was diminished as his control of the Red Army was allocated to Zhu Enlai. Meanwhile, Mao recovered from tuberculosis. The KMT armies adopted a policy of encirclement and annihilation of the Red Armies. Outnumbered, Mao responded with guerrilla tactics influenced by the works of ancient military strategists like Sun Tzu, but Chu and the new leadership followed a policy of open confrontation and conventional warfare. In doing so, the Red Army successfully defeated the first and second encirclements. Angered at his army's failure, Chiang Kai-shek personally arrived to lead the operation. He too faced setbacks and retreated to deal with the further Japanese incursions into China. As a result of the KMT change of focus to the defense of China against Japanese expansionism, the Red Army was able to expand its area of control, eventually encompassing a population of three million. Mao proceeded with his land reform program. In November 1931, he announced the start of a land verification project, which was expanded in June 1933. He also orchestrated education programs and implemented measures to increase female political participation. Qing viewed the communists as a greater threat than the Japanese and returned to Jiangxi, where he initiated the Fifth Encirclement Campaign, which involved the construction of a concrete and barbed wire wall of fire around the state, which was accompanied by aerial bombardment, to which Zhu's tactics proved ineffective. Trapped inside, morale among the Red Army dropped as food and medicine became scarce. The leadership decided to evacuate. Long March 1934-1935 on October 14, 1934, the Red Army broke through the KMT line on the Jiangxi Soviet southwest corner at Xinfeng with 85,000 soldiers and 15,000 party cotters and embarked on the Long March. In order to make the escape, many of the wounded and the ill, as well as women and children, were left behind, defended by a group of guerrilla fighters whom the KMT massacred. The 100,000 who escaped headed to southern Hunan, first crossing the Ziang River after heavy fighting, and then the Wu River, in Gizhu where they took Zunyi in January 1935. Temporarily resting in the city, they held a conference. Here, Mao was elected to a position of leadership, becoming chairman of the Politburo and de facto leader of both party and Red Army, in part because his candidacy was supported by Soviet Premier Joseph Stalin. Insisting that they operate as a guerrilla force, he laid out a destination, the Shenzhi Soviet in Shaanxi, northern China, from where the communists could focus on fighting the Japanese. Mao believed that in focusing on the anti-imperialist struggle, the communists would earn the trust of the Chinese people, who in turn would renounce the KMT. From Zunyi, Mao led his troops to Laoshan Pass, where they faced armed opposition but successfully crossed the river. Qing flew into the area to lead his armies against Mao, but the communists outmaneuvered him and crossed the Jinshu River. Faced with the more difficult task of crossing the Tatu River, they managed it by fighting a battle over the looting bridge in May, taking looting. Marching through the mountain ranges around Manchun, in Maokong, western Sichuan, they encountered the 50,000-strong CCP 4th Front Army of Zhang Guotao, and together proceeded to Maokai, and then Gansu. Zhang and Mao disagreed over what to do. The latter wished to proceed to Shaanxi, while Zhang wanted to retreat east to Tibet or Sikkim, far from the KMT threat. It was agreed that they would go their separate ways, with Zhu joining Zhang. 
Mao's forces proceeded north through hundreds of kilometers of grasslands, an area of quagmire where they were attacked by Manchu tribesmen, and where many soldiers succumbed to famine and disease. Finally reaching Shaanxi, they fought off both the KMT and an Islamic cavalry militia before crossing the Min Mountains and Mount Liupan and reaching the Shenshi Soviet. Only 7,000, 8,000 had survived. A long march cemented Mao's status as the dominant figure in the party. In November 1935, he was named chairman of the military commission. From this point onward, Mao was the Communist Party's undisputed leader, even though he would not become party chairman until 1943. Alliance with the Kuomintang, 1935-1940, he, he, 40, he, 40, he, 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 40, he, 40, he, 40, he, 40, he, 40, he, 40, he, in forty, in forty, in forty, he 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 he in forty, in forty, he. Mao's troops arrived at the Yanin Soviet during October 1935 and settled in Powin until spring 1936. While there, they developed links with local communities, redistributed and farmed the land, offered medical treatment, and began literacy programs. Mao now commanded 15,000 soldiers boosted by the arrival of He Long's men from Hunan and the armies of Zhu De and Zhang Guitao returned from Tibet. In February 1936, they established the Northwest Anti-Japanese Red Army University in Yanin, through which they trained increasing numbers of new recruits. In January 1937, they began the Anti-Japanese Expedition, that sent groups of guerrilla fighters into Japanese-controlled territory to undertake sporadic attacks. In May 1937, a communist conference was held in Yanin to discuss the situation. Western reporters also arrived in the border region, as the Soviet had been renamed. Most notable were Edgar Snow, who used his experiences as a basis for Red Star over China, and Agnes Smedley, whose accounts brought international attention to Mao's cause. On the long march, Mao's wife He Zizin had been injured by a shrapnel wound to the head. She traveled to Moscow for medical treatment. Mao proceeded to divorce her and marry an actress, Jane King. He Zizin was reportedly dispatched to a mental asylum in Moscow to make room for King. Mao moved into a cave house and spent much of his time reading, tending his garden, and theorizing. He came to believe that the Red Army alone was unable to defeat the Japanese, and that a communist-led government of national defense should be formed with the KMT and other bourgeois nationalist elements to achieve this goal. Although despising Chiang Kai-shek as a traitor to the nation, on May 5 he telegrammed the military council of the Nanking national government proposing a military alliance, a course of action advocated by Stalin. Although Chiang intended to ignore Mao's message and continue the civil war, he was arrested by one of his own generals, Zhang Zuoliang in Xi'an, leading to the Xi'an incident. Zhang forced Chiang to discuss the issue with the communists, resulting in the formation of a united front with concessions on both sides on December 25, 1937. The Japanese had taken both Shanghai and Nanking Nanjing, resulting in the Nanking Massacre, an atrocity Mao never spoke of all his life and was pushing the Kuomintang government inland to Chongqing. The Japanese brutality led to increasing numbers of Chinese joining the fight, and the Red Army grew from 50,000 to 500,000. In August 1938, the Red Army formed the new Fourth Army and the Eighth Route Army, which were nominally under the command of Qing's National Revolutionary Army. In August 1940, the Red Army initiated the Hundred Regiments campaign in which 400,000 troops attacked the Japanese simultaneously in five provinces. It was a military success that resulted in the death of 20,000 Japanese, the disruption of railways and the loss of a coal mine. From his base in Yanin, Mao offered several texts for his troops, including Philosophy of Revolution, which offered an introduction to the Marxist theory of knowledge protracted warfare, which dealt with guerrilla and mobile military tactics, 
and new democracy which laid forward ideas for China's future. Resuming Civil War 1940-1949 Leadership of China Great Leap Forward Consequences At the Lushan Conference in July-August 1959, several ministers expressed concern that the Great Leap Forward had not proved as successful as planned. The most direct of these was Minister of Defense and Korean War veteran General Peng Dehuai. Following Peng's criticism of the Great Leap Forward, Mao orchestrated a purge of Peng and his supporters, stifling criticism of the Great Leap policies. Senior officials who reported the truth of the famine to Mao were branded as right opportunists. A campaign against right-wing opportunism was launched and resulted in party members and ordinary peasants being sent to prison labor camps, where many would subsequently die in the famine. Years later, the CCP would conclude that as many as six million people were wrongly punished in the campaign. The number of deaths by starvation during the Great Leap Forward is deeply controversial. Until the mid minus 1980s, when official census figures were finally published by the Chinese government, little was known about the scale of the disaster in the Chinese countryside, as the handful of Western observers allowed access during this time had been restricted to model villages, where they were deceived into believing that the Great Leap Forward had been a great there was also an assumption that the flow of individual reports of starvation that had been reaching the West primarily through Hong Kong and Taiwan must have been localized or exaggerated as China was continuing to claim record harvests and was a net exporter of grain through the period. Because Mao wanted to pay back early to the Soviets' debts, totaling 1.973 billion yuan from 1960 to 1962, Exports increased by 50%, and fellow communist regimes in North Korea, North Vietnam, and Albania were provided grain free of charge. Censuses were carried out in China in 1953, 1964, and 1982. The first attempt to analyze this data to estimate the number of famine deaths was carried out by American demographer Dr. Judith Bannister and published in 1984. Given the lengthy gaps between the censuses and doubts over the reliability of the data, an accurate figure is difficult to ascertain. Nevertheless, Bannister concluded that the official data implied that around 15 million excess deaths incurred in China during 1958-61, and that based on her modeling of Chinese demographics during the period and taking account of assumed underreporting during the famine years, the figure was around 30 million. The official statistic is 20 million deaths, as given by Hu Yebang. Yang Jisheng, a former Xinhua news agency reporter who had privileged access and connections available to no other scholars, estimates a death toll of 36 million. Frank de Cotter estimates that there were at least 45 million premature deaths attributable to the Great Leap Forward from 1958 to 1962. Various other sources have put the figure at between 20 and 46 million. Split from Soviet Union On the international front, the period was dominated by the further isolation of China. The Sino-Soviet split resulted in Nikita K. H. Rushev's withdrawal of all Soviet technical experts and aid from the country. The split concerned the leadership of world communism. The USSR had a network of communist parties it supported. China now created its own rival network to battle it out for local control of the left in numerous countries. Lawrence M. Luthay writes, The Sino-Soviet split was one of the key events of the Cold War, equal in importance to the construction of the Berlin Wall, the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Second Vietnam War, and Sino-American rapprochement, the split helped to determine the framework of the Second Cold War in general and influenced the course of the Second Vietnam War in particular. Only Albania openly sided with China, thereby forming an alliance between the two countries which would last until after Mao's death in 1976. Warned that the Soviets had nuclear weapons, Mao minimized the threat. Becker says that Mao believed that the bomb was a paper tiger, declaring to K. A. Trushev that it would not matter if China lost 300 million people in a nuclear war.
the other half of the population would survive to ensure victory. Struggle against Soviet revisionism and U.S. imperialism was an important aspect of Mao's attempt to direct the revolution in the right direction. Great Proletarian Cultural Revolution State Visits During his leadership, Mao traveled outside China on only two occasions, both state visits to the Soviet Union. His first visit abroad was to celebrate the 71st birthday of Soviet leader Joseph Stalin, which was also attended by East German Deputy Chairman of the Council of Ministers Walter Ulbricht and Mongolian Communist General Secretary Yumjajian Sedinval. The second visit to Moscow was a two-week state visit of which the highlights included Mao's attendance at the 40th anniversary Ruby Jubilee celebrations of the October Revolution. He attended the annual military parade of it. When Mao stepped down as head of state on April 27, 1959, further diplomatic state visits and travels abroad were undertaken by President Liu Shaoqi, Premier Zhu Enlai, and Deputy Premier Deng Xiaoping rather than Mao personally. Death and Aftermath Mao's health declined in his last years, probably aggravated by his chain smoking. It became a state secret that he suffered from multiple lung and heart ailments during his later years. There are unconfirmed reports that he possibly had Parkinson's disease in addition to amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as Lou Jairig's disease. His final public appearance and the last known photograph of him alive had been on May 27, 1976, when he met the visiting Pakistani Prime Minister Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. He suffered two major heart attacks, one in March and another in July, then a third on September 5, rendering him an invalid. He died nearly four days later, at 010 on September 9, 1976, at the age of 82. The Communist Party delayed the announcement of his death until 16, zero when a national radio broadcast announced the news and appealed for party unity. Mao's embalmed body draped in the CCP flag, lay in state at the Great Hall of the People for one week. One million Chinese filed past to pay their final respects, many crying openly or displaying sadness, while foreigners watched on television. Mao's official portrait hung on the wall with a banner reading, Carry on the cause left by Chairman Mao and carry on the cause of proletarian revolution to the end. On September 17, the body was taken in a minibus to the 305 hospital, where his internal organs were preserved in formaldehyde. On September 18, guns, sirens, whistles and horns across China were simultaneously blown, and a mandatory three-minute silence was observed. Tiananmen Square was packed with millions of people, and a military band played the Internationale. Hua Guofeng concluded the service with a 20-minute-long eulogy atop Tiananmen Gate. Despite Mao's request to be cremated, his body was later permanently put on display in the mausoleum of Mao Zedong in order for the Chinese nation to pay its respects. Legacy Public Image Mao gave contradicting statements on the subject of personality cults. In 1955, as a response to the K. A. Trushev report that criticized Joseph Stalin, Mao stated that personality cults are poisonous ideological survivals of the old society, and reaffirmed China's commitment to collective leadership. At the 1958 Party Congress in Chengdu, Mao expressed support for the personality cults of people whom he labeled as genuinely worthy figures, not those that expressed blind worship. In 1962, Mao proposed the Socialist Education Movement ASEAM in an attempt to educate the peasants to resist the temptations of feudalism and the sprouts of capitalism that he saw re-emerging in the countryside from Liu Zikin. Uh, 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 uh. Large quantities of politicized art were produced and circulated with Mao at the center. Numerous posters, badges, and musical compositions referenced Mao in the phrase Chairman Mao is the red sun in our hearts Mao Zhu Zai Shi Women Zin Zhang De Hong Tai Yang Mao Zhuxi Shi Women Zin Zhang De Hong Tai Yang and Savior of the People Ren Min De Da Ju Zing Ren Min De Da Jiaxing. In October 1966, 
Mao's quotations from Chairman Mao Zedong, known as the Little Red Book, was published. Party members were encouraged to carry a copy with them, and possession was almost mandatory as a criterion for membership. According to Mao, the unknown story by Jun Yang, the mass publication and sale of this text contributed to making Mao the only millionaire created in 1950s China 332. Over the years, Mao's image became displayed almost everywhere, present in homes, offices, and shops. His quotations were typographically emphasized by putting them in bold face or red type in even the most obscure writings. Music from the period emphasized Mao's stature, as did children's rhymes. The phrase long live Chairman Mao for 10,000 years was commonly heard during the era. Mao also has a presence in China and around the world in popular culture, where his face adorns everything from t-shirts to coffee cups. Mao's granddaughter, Kang Dongmei, defended the phenomenon, stating that it shows his influence, that he exists in people's consciousness, and has influenced several generations of Chinese people's way of life. Just like Qi Guevara's image, his has become a symbol of revolutionary culture. Since 1950, over 40 million people have visited Mao's birthplace in Shaoshan, Hunan. A 2016 survey by YouGov survey found that 42% of American millennials have never heard of Mao. According to the CIS poll, in 2019 only 21% of Australian millennials were familiar with Mao Zedong. In 2020's China, members of Generation Z are embracing Mao's revolutionary ideas, including violence against the capitalist class amid rising social inequality, long working hours, and decreasing economic opportunities. Genealogy Ancestors Mao's ancestors were Mao Yicheng, Mao Yicheng, born Xiangtan, October 15, 1870. Died Shaoshan, January 23, 1920, father, courtesy name Mao Shunsheng, Mao Shunsheng, or also known as Mao Jiansheng. Wen Kai Mei, Wen Kai Mei, born Xiangxing, 1867, died October 5, 1919, mother. She was illiterate and a devout Buddhist. She was a descendant of Wen Tang Sang. Mao and Pu Mao and Pu, born May 22, 1846, died November 23, 1904, paternal grandfather. Liu Liu slash Liu, given name not recorded, born 1847, died May 20, 1884, paternal grandmother. Mao Zhen Mao Zhu Ren, paternal great grandfather. Wives Mao had four wives who gave birth to a total of ten children. Among them, Liuo Yixiu, October 20, 1889 1910 of Shaoshan, married 1907 to 1910. Yang Kai Hui, 1901 1930 of Changsha, married 1921 to 1927. Executed by the KMT in 1930, mother to Mao Anying, Mao Anqing, and Mao Enlong. Ezijin 1910-1984 of Jiangxi. Married May 1928-1937, mother to six children. Jiang King 1914-1991. Married 1939 until Mao's death, mother to Lai Na. Lai Na. Siblings, Sings. Mao had several siblings. Mao Zemin 1895-1943, younger brother, executed by a warlord. Mao Zetin 1905-1935, younger brother, executed by the KMT. Mao Zhejian 1905-1929, adopted sister, executed by the KMT. Mao's parents altogether had five sons and two daughters. Two of the sons and both daughters died young leaving the three brothers Mao Zedong, Mao Zemin, and Mao Zetin. Like all three of Mao Zedong's wives, Mao Zemin and Mao Zetin were communists. Like Yang Kai Hui, both Mao Zemin and Mao Zetin were killed in warfare during Mao Zedong's lifetime. Note that the character ZZ appears in all of the siblings given names. This is a common Chinese naming convention. From the next generation, Mao Zemin's son Mao Yuingsen was raised by Mao Zedong's family, and he became Mao Zedong's liaison with the Politburo in 1975. 
In Lai Zhisui's The Private Life of Chairman Mao, Mao Yuingsen played a role in the final power struggles. Children Mao had a total of ten children, including Mao Eni 1922-1950, Sun Tu Yang married to Liu Siki Liu Si Kai, killed in action during the Korean War, Mao Anking 1923-2007, Sun Tu Yang married to Xiao Hua, Sun Mao Zinyu, grandson Mao Dong Dong, Mao and Long 1927-1931, Sun Tu Yang died during the Chinese Civil War. Mao and Hong, son to He, left to Mao's younger brother Zetin, and then to one of Zetin's guards when he went off to war, was never heard of again. Lai Min B. 1936. Daughter to He married to Kong Ling Hua Kong Ling Hua, son Kong Jining Kong Jai Zhu, daughter Kong Dong Mei Kong Dong Mei. Lai Na B. 1940. Daughter to Jiang, whose birth surname was Lai a name also used by Mao while evading the KMT, married to Wang Jingking Wang Jingking, son Wang Xiaoji Wang Xiaoji Mao's first and second daughters were left to local villagers because it was too dangerous to raise them while fighting the Kuomintang and later the Japanese. Their youngest daughter born in early 1938 in Moscow, after Mao separated, and one other child born 1933 died in infancy. Two English researchers who retraced the entire Long March route in 2002-2003 located a woman whom they believe might well be one of the missing children abandoned by Mao to peasants in 1935. Ed Jocelyn and Andrew McEwen hope a member of the Mao family will respond to requests for a DNA test. Through his ten children, Mao became grandfather to twelve grandchildren, many of whom he never knew. He has many great-grandchildren alive today. One of his granddaughters is businesswoman Kang Dangmei, one of the richest people in China. His grandson Mao Zinyu is a general in the Chinese army. Both he and Kang have written books about their grandfather. Personal Life Mao's private life was kept very secret at the time of his rule. After Mao's death, Lai Zhisui, his personal physician, published The Private Life of Chairman Mao, a memoir which mentions some aspects of Mao's private life. Some scholars and some other people who also personally knew and worked with Mao have disputed the accuracy of these characterizations. Having grown up in Hunan, Mao spoke Mandarin with a marked Hunanese accent. Ross Terrell wrote Mao was a son of the soil, rural and unsophisticated in origins, while Claire Hollingworth said, that Mao was proud of his peasant ways and manners, having a strong Hunanese accent and providing earthy comments on sexual matters. Li Fagon said that Mao's earthiness meant that he remained connected to everyday Chinese life. Li Fagon considered Mao draconian and authoritarian when threatened but opined that he was not the kind of villain that his mentor Stalin was. Alexander Pansov and Stephen I. Levine wrote, that Mao was a man of complex moods, who tried his best to bring about prosperity and gain international respect for China, being neither a saint nor a demon. They noted that in early life, he strove to be a strong, willful, and purposeful hero, not bound by any moral chains, and that he passionately desired fame and power. Mao learned to speak some English, particularly through Zhang Hanjai, his English teacher, interpreter, and diplomat who later married Kaio Guanhua, foreign minister of China and the head of China's UN delegation. His spoken English was limited to a few single words, phrases, and some short sentences. He first chose to systematically learn English in the 1950s, which was very unusual as the main foreign language first taught in Chinese schools at that time was Russian. Writings and Calligraphy Mao was a prolific writer of political and philosophical literature. The main repository of his premonist 1,949 writings is the selected works of Mao Zedong, published in four volumes by the People's Publishing House since 1951. A fifth volume, which brought the timeline up to 1957, was briefly issued during the leadership of Huang Guofeng, but subsequently withdrawn from circulation, for its perceived ideological errors. 
there has never been an official complete works of Mao Zedong collecting all his known publications. Mao is the attributed author of quotations from Chairman Mao Zedong, known in the West as the Little Red Book and in Cultural Revolution China as the Red Treasure Book Hong Bao Shu, first published in January 1964. This is a collection of short extracts from his many speeches and articles most found in the selected works, edited by Lin Bio, and ordered topically. The Little Red Book contains some of Mao's most widely known quotes. Mao wrote prolifically on political strategy, commentary, and philosophy both before and after he assumed power. Mao was also a skilled Chinese calligrapher with a highly personal style. In China, Mao was considered a master calligrapher during his lifetime. His calligraphy can be seen today throughout mainland China. His work gave rise to a new form of Chinese calligraphy called Mao style or Maoti, which has gained increasing popularity since his death. There exist various competitions specializing in Mao style calligraphy. Literary works, three works, as did most Chinese intellectuals of his generation. Mao's education began with Chinese classical literature. Mao told Edgar Snow in 1936 that he had started the study of the Confucian Analects and the Four Books at a village school when he was eight, but that the books he most enjoyed reading were Water Margin, Journey to the West, The Romance of the Three Kingdoms, and Dream of the Red Chamber. Mao published poems in classical forms starting in his youth, and his abilities as a poet contributed to his image in China after he came to power in 1949. His style was influenced by the great Tang dynasty poets Lai Bai and Lai He. Some of his most well-known poems are Changsha 1925, the double ninth October 1929. Portrayal in Film and Television Mao has been portrayed in film and television numerous times. Some notable actors include Han Shi, the first actor ever to have portrayed Mao in a 1978 drama Dalian Hua, and later again in a 1980 film Cross the Dadu River, Gu Yu who had portrayed Mao 84 times on screen throughout his 27-year career and had won the Best Actor title at the Hundred Flowers Awards in 19. Mao is a principal character in American composer John Adams' opera Nixon in China 1987. The Beatles' song Revolution refers to Mao in the verse, but if you go carrying pictures of Chairman Mao, you ain't going to make it with anyone anyhow. John Lennon expressed regret over including these lines in the song in 1972.